This is Off Planet Radio. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to Off Planet Radio, Off Planet TV. I'm Emily Moyer, and we are here with the Creamies, Steve and Chris, for part two of the Alchemical Insider Sacred Geometry series. This is episode two. This will be squaring the circle. The last episode was the Vesica Pisces. Thank you everybody for all the great interactions and comments we got about that. It was really cool to do that and hope everybody's learning some stuff and having a good time doing this. And uh, I have a hard out today. So with no, no, no further ado, Chris and Steve, welcome back to Off Planet Radio. Yeah, thanks Emily. Thanks Emily, you're happy to be here. So, all right, so then let's not have any more ado. Let's get right in. I mean, well, there's always a do with me. I'm sure I'll find some nonsense chitter chatter to throw in here and there, but let's, uh, Let's get to the lesson and then we'll leave time for fun and games afterwards. Okay, All righty, let's go. Here we go, we're well, in the circle. Well, good, Chris, you wanna start the invocation. All right, so we always like to begin with this and we write it up on top of our page so that we set the sacred space, okay? And it says, may we be guided by truth, may beauty be revealed to us, and may it result in the good. So that's always our intention. We set our it. And stick okay. around because we have some interesting gematria on that. At the yeah, end, we do. At the oh, end. cool. Yeah. All right. Yeah, you're gonna love it. Uh, this drawing is squaring the circle. So here's our square. And here's our circle. And we are what we are doing with this is reconciling heaven and earth. Okay. So we're, we're finding the harmonics of heaven and earth and what okay. we did in the first drawing when we started with the circle and, and duplicated the circle and we had a male and female or a heaven and earth circle we we separated mm -hmm. unity the absolute Actually. into the duality into heaven and earth into the sacred duality so that was the vesica yeah. pisces yeah right. so now we're going to bring it back together okay. and the way it's brought back together and within geometry is using is is to, is making a square, taking um, a square and getting a circle of the same perimeter. And you okay. can do the same volume, but in this case, it's the same perimeter because it, it yields some really interesting results when you do that. Okay. So, and, and, and in actuality, because the circle runs on pi and all that sort of things, you cannot do it exactly. Like it's like when you're making a, a seven st pointed star or a five pointed star, you have to approximate the drawing. You can't do it exactly. If you're doing cutting a circle in half, it's easy. It's in half or in quarters, you can do that and it's exact. But with five and seven, you cannot do it exactly. The drawings are always gonna be approximations. And just like that, squaring the circle, there are a number of different ways and they're always going to be approximations because you can't have the celestial world and this world of solidity that operates on a downgraded system a little bit, as Plato might mm -hmm. say, um, mm -hmm. you know, a much denser thing mm -hmm. than, than the celestial uh, templates that we talked about with the last drawing, the square root of two, three, five, and all that, all those um, transcendent numbers. So it, it can't be done exactly, but it can be done very close. And this is a drawing that does that. Okay, excellent. All right, now as you get to the end of the drawing, I just wanted to point this out. Um, we will end up putting the moon up here above okay. the earth, okay? And okay. showing the ratios between the moon and the earth. And then you end up with, if you get your square around that moon circle, that can give you the three, four, five triangle here. Okay. All right. That takes a little more time to construct at the end of the drawing. By then we're kind of fatigued okay. from all of what we've yeah. gone through to get it. So we're gonna leave that part out of the actual drawing today, but it's included in the notes. Okay. So just look here, observe it, see where it is, see what we're talking about here, how this corner of the square brings you the triangle with the moon. Okay. And then you can finish that construction by following the, the notes. Yeah. It's okay. very important in sort of Egyptian and Pythagorean. Yeah, I was gonna say that looks very much like a slope of yeah, the pyramid kind of thing. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. 
There you go. So take a deep breath, get your pencils out and your and before we start, everybody, just, just so you know, the notes for both the, how to draw this and any anecdotal uh, additional information that they, they, they will all be linked in the description box below this video. Okay. Yeah. The, yeah. The, so the, you guys did a great job with the last one. I thought everything was, was nice. Okay. And clear. Very good. For the, for the, uh, for the patrons. Yes. Okay. Very good. Yes. All right. So like the last drawing, we are going to take the, the absolute whiteness of the page and then we're going to draw a horizontal line. Okay. And so we do like to put that, the beauty, the, the good up top and put today's date when you're doing your drawing, so that when you refer back, you have some kind of, that's all right. which, will be, which will be a different date when you guys are drawing this, but yeah. yeah. It'll be a different date when <laughs> Yeah, okay. So just so you know, it's just nice to go back and have something to refer to. Yeah. In a timeline, okay. So, um, one of the things Aristotle was famous for was his four causes. And uh, the fourth cause in Aristotle is the teleological cause, which means the end, knowing where, where the end of things are. So you kind of mm -hmm. have to, with this drawing, you have to know, as to make a, a start with your uh, opening radius, mm. knowing that you're going to be growing, growing larger. Right. Okay. So, so this is going to be maybe about a quarter of the page or so. Yeah. Is, the, is the initial radius that we're going to draw our, our first circle with. Yeah. We did a so how, how, is that a specific length that you drew that line that people should know? Yeah, it was just the length of my ruler. Just the length of your ruler. Okay. Yeah, I, just that. That. I was listening to Steve, so I didn't catch that. Yeah, so it's mostly across the page. Well, if you're on a large page, yeah, this is, this is about as big as my ruler will go. Okay. And you have but, a lengthy ruler there. Okay. Yeah. And that's the one with the cork on the back. But, um, gotcha. We're just setting our horizon line. And we're going to go about one, two, about a quarter three, of the page. four. So if you open your compass, so about four. Four. At the, at the, your compass is all the way open? Yeah, the problem is because okay. you have to draw a line later that, that the first time we did the drawing was longer than the compass could go. Gotcha, OK. <laughs> so you so. can see we've already done two practice drawings to yes. get the glitches out. And, and, <laughs> And, and may they continue to get out. <laughs> and right. I'm, I'm aiming for about middle as best I can by eye. Okay. And I'm firmly playing, placing the point, the compass point in. Okay. And that will describe my circle. Okay. Now, I've got the extension on my compass. So it's harder for me to, to, to work it from up here. Okay. So just using a regular compass with no extension, it's nice to be able to just scribe the circle by holding this and twirling it. Yeah. Okay. The problem is that these things tend to open and close with pressure on them. So you have yeah. to get practiced with mm -hmm. it. Yeah. So, all right. So now you've got the circle and you're going to make mark points A and B where the circle hits the horizon line. And now, like um, last time, we're going to make a perpendicular. And okay. Also, which we're also going to cut the circle in half, even though you have your point in the middle. We want to draw a vertical line, a perpendicular through sure the circle. So you're going to open up the compass. I just want to make sure that if I need to find that center again, I want to make a good hole there. Okay. Okay. Go ahead. Yeah, so you want to open it up just a little more, and you're going to make little cut marks above and below within the circle. From A. These are construction marks so that you can get. So get I'm going to open up my compass by twirling this wheel. I'm going to place the point mm -hmm. at the oh, juncture of that's A. Too much. That's too much? Yeah, you're going inside the circle. I'm going inside. So I'm aiming toward somewhere around that middle point. Let's see, how, see if I get it. Okay. So you, cut above, so you cut above and below, that way you're going to have three points to line up, and it's better to have three points to line up than two, okay. so for accuracy. And you go to B, get a firm footing. Good, I've got a strike and a strike. Right, so this, okay. is, and this is basically how you would bisect any line. You have any line of a certain length, yeah. that's how you would 
that's how you would accurately cut it in half geometrically. Okay. So now we have our vertical. Okay, so I'm gonna draw in, and I'm gonna extend a little bit above, right? And a little yeah. bit below. Yeah, yeah, it'll be helpful later to just go past the circle. So these, so you have these construction lines, it'll be helpful. Now, always take your time and getting this accurate on your X because it makes a difference as the drawing grows. So I can go how far back? That's good. That's good. And that's gonna give me right through the center of the circle as well, through that line that I was wanting to keep accurate here, that point. Okay, so then from there you, you can label um, C on top and D below. And then O in the center. So that's just traditional as far as we know. O being zero, zero point. Zero point, yeah. Okay. Right. Yeah. So the, the center the center of the whole drawing from whence everything ensues. And of course, you know, it's sort of a microcosm of the whole. So the as whole the drawing thing. gets larger and you get go through the letters of the alphabet and you get to O, you don't <coughs> use, you yeah, don't use good. O again. Salute. Okay, just, thank you. Uh, all right. So now this is the Earth circle. Okay, just for just for standard reference um, of, of where this is going. So we're going to from here we're going to draw a square around the circle. So you're going to have to go back to the original radius. Now you're going to be really happy to have that solid mark. Yeah, and if you're really rich, you can have lots, <laughs> lots, lots of lots of compi, and uh, <laughs> with, with, with all set at all set at perfect radiuses that you can just pick up that's, and put down. That's nice. You know, or or graduate students. Okay, so, so there I'm back at my original radius. So now to make the square about the circle, you're going to go to each of the four corner points, A, B, C, and D, and you're going to make cuts above and below. Above A, hopefully that's below A, gravity's helpful. And you're going to do that at A, B, C, and D, and um, all goes well, you're going to have, you know, four little notches that'll give you a perfect square so okay. you can describe about this circle. Take your time, get your good footing. Aha, I'm going to go off on that one. We'll correct it later. Oh, I'm going to go off on that one too. Not on that one. Okay, so now I need to get a little more accurate here, right? Mm -hmm. Check your radius. Yeah, it moved. See, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it did. It did. It's yeah, you pushed enough. it in. Yeah, uh, you guys are my favorite because you know sometimes men tell their wives on the way out the door to check their lipstick because it's a little off right, center. Check, really check, check your radius, radius. right? Check your radius, baby. <laughs> yeah, I think, I think it expanded a little bit. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> we we're considering doing this whole routine. Yeah, yeah. Know. We were having so much fun. Well, and then we get in big arguments, you know, when we're doing the practice ones. Yeah. Oh, really? Oh. <laughs> you guys should record that so we can put out a teaser yeah. for the show. We can have an outtakes, you know. <laughs> anyway, so now, now Chris is lovingly going to make this square circle. <laughs> All right. Taking my time. Focusing in between giggles. But it's always nice when it hits perfectly on the top of the circle. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. Yay. Yay. Again, this is a lot easier when you're down on a table. Right. Mm -hmm. You guys are doing a great job. And then you always take into consideration, well, I'm working with a felt tip pen. So I always have to take into consideration the thickness of the, the yep. paint. Yeah. Yeah. Because it does, it will throw your drawing off. Well, and it also, like, when you first open a Sharpie, it's nice and pointy. Oh, I and know. It, but that, right. And then, like, even with, like even mm, an hour later, it's already starting to widen and whatever. It's, like, not as much fun. Very true. Mm -hmm. And in the drawing, it really makes a difference. Yep. Right. And, and then it's, it's almost like, you know, jumbo shrimp, the extra fine point. Yeah. The fat, 
You know, it's like, what the heck is that? That's not an extra five point. <laughs> I like that those I like colored pencils and I love those very thin ones that you can really get like a nice tiny thin yeah. point on for doing very thin lines. Yeah. Oh, you know what's really fun is the gel the colored gel pens. Yeah, I have those too. When, when I color, yeah, when I color I like to do like I like to do a lot of shading and then uh -huh. on the outline I like to use the gel mm -hmm. color pen and then shade against that. But yeah, I love those. My, I, 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 um, Right. If you do a geometry drawing with the gel pens on black construction paper, it looks amazing. It's yeah, gorgeous. Maybe the can... guy who made that's the guy who made made our the art for our Patreon gifts uh, of Nice for Krishna. He that's how he does his geometry drawings is with the gel pens on black paper. Okay. Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. Mm -hmm. We can show you some of them actually. I just later. wanted to point out. So the if you need to clean your ruler, mm -hmm. I keep a, a bottle of alcohol, rubbing alcohol. Yeah. Tissue and otherwise, it's all over my hands. So. Yeah. You can use cheap vodka too. Oh, you, you could use vodka. And, um, and, and when I worked in restaurants, we used the cheap, you know, the, uh, the what is it, the, the, cough, the what's the name of the uh, Kamchatka to cl polish the silverware, right? The Kamchatka. Really? Oh, vodka, yeah. Really? Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's a vodka? The, yeah. Huh. Well, that's mm -hmm. good to know. The, thing, right. the things you learn in geometry class, right? <laughs> All, right. All right. So What's new that? letters. New letters, right. Right, so now we want to put the letters in the, the corners of the square and top left one, what's next? C, D, E, right? A, B, C, D, E. Um, right is F. We're going across. F. Correct. G and H across the bottom. All right. So now, now we, we have, have, we have what looks like a four square court here. Yeah, yes. yeah. Yes. So oh we God, have. Oh God, I haven't heard that in years. So mm -hmm. now we have perfectly <laughs> circumscribed the Earth circle, and this is the square that we are eventually going to um, make uh, make make the perfect circle around to okay. to match the perimeters. Okay. That's this is the squaring the circle. We're actually going to be circling the square. All right. <laughs> no, 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 no. This was false advertising. Right. right, right. <laughs> okay. So now, next, we're going to do. Um, we're going to. Uh, we're going to swing an arc from A to O. So we're going to bisect this line, just like we bisected the last line AB. We're going to bisect line AO the same way. So we're going to make go from A, make a cut above and below A within the circle here, and a cut from above and below O, and we're going to. We're going to cut this line in half. All right. My brain did not follow that. So yeah, say my, mine either. So okay. So All we're right. going to buy. We ju just like before. We bisected line AB. Yep. We're going to bisect line. Oh, okay. A so we're making smaller versions. Okay. Right. Okay. So so it's so same close. sort of thing. Make going to make it. Yes. Yeah, so you're going to close we're it. We're fra we're fractalizing it. Yes. Oh, good. Right. And and this is actually very similar to what we did in the last drawing because you're going to make a golden mean cut. Okay. So where am I looking to go? Above and below. Above and below. Sort of halfway. We're going to make we're bisecting. In here. Yeah. In mm -hmm. this space. Okay. Yeah. So and this is going to be a construction line, so this doesn't have to be a this right. full line. You would not know that we did this drawing twice already. The way I'm asking stupid questions. <laughs> it, 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 it's all different once you get in front of the camera, you know. Well, yeah. Is that what Whatever. you mean? Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. And then yeah. I go to O. Yes. 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 Yeah, so isn't anyway, it above and below? Isn't it funny how things you're generally familiar with look and feel different when you're a little nervous, oh, like you're well, in front of the a, camera, you're on stage? Yeah. This is a funny drawing because it should be really simple, but we seem to have, have, have been having difficulty yeah. getting through it, and, and I'm not exactly sure why. But but isn't that, but isn't that, isn't sort of squaring the circle largely the basis of a lot of the things that secret societies are created about. And so it's intentionally confusing, right? Like by its nature, isn't it something that is challenging to well, understand? And that's why it's been the uh, sort of basis of what, the base of what confusing structures have been built upon. Yes, I mean, because I mean, or let's let's look at this this stupid recent thing, the the Epstein Island thing. It's mm -hmm. got a dome on top of a cube. All right, mm -hmm. that's the three dimensional version of what we're doing here. Mm, yeah. Right, but of course, you sh once you shift the sizes, so um, 
in the, the, the first real church to do this was Hagia Sophia in, the, in Byzantium, or now Istanbul, in mm -hmm. Constantinople in 500, where they realized that they can put a dome on top of a cube and then use buttresses to hold the walls in. Yeah. Right? But their idea was to have this immense space. Mm -hmm. So once you're in, so if you ever get lucky enough to go into that space, what you're walking into, you're walking into the cube on your level. You are in, in the cube in three dimensional space, but the whole dome of the spheres of the heavens is open to you. Yeah. Right. And so you resonate. Mm -hmm. You resonate with that opening, with that construction, with holds heaven and earth together. Mm -hmm. And as we've talked about before, you know everybody can mess with that. Yep and mess with that in various ways. But in, in general, this whole putting the circle on the square is the way to, to connect the celestial and the terrestrial. Yeah. You know, and that's why when you look at, you know, the architecture of schools, prisons and hospitals are all exactly the same, right? Right. You know, and they're, and they're just the cube. Just the cube, <laughs> right? It's be very dense. We want nothing but density that's here. That's good. You that's know? Good. Yeah. And, you know, and I'll have to say, so for example, uh, the, one, the gentleman that we studied a lot with, Keith Critchlow, he built a children's hospital in India mm -hmm. and he designed it and, um, and it's absolutely gorgeous. Mm -hmm. You know, it's a place where you, you would be happy to go to heal. Yeah. You know, um, you know, using these kind of geometric. Well, didn't it also, like, I remember hearing those stories about they did experiments in Russia with keeping prisoners in like teepee like structures or triangular structures as oh, opposed to sorry. blocks, huh? Go ahead. Yeah, you've heard that, right? And they well, found that the people who were in these structures that were more like cones or teepees had a lower recidivism rate than the people who were kept in the oh, right, right. And, and yeah. and that's right and that's that's the exact same thing and that's yeah, why okay. they built them they built them to mirror their their cosmology not to mention the pole down the middle which is the uh the yeah. Bundi, yep you know, which is this, the pole connecting which yeah. is actual, it was a, which is an actual real thing, by the way. It's completely the real thing. It's the it's it's the, it's your it's like the pole that tethers your here yourself here in the density to your highest self out above. Yeah, so yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. We are that. We're all that. Yeah. Let's continue this, but then we have a little story to tell. Okay, cool. I like stories. <laughs> all right. So we're we're bisecting this line, and we don't have to draw the whole line. If Chris wants to, she so, can do like a dotted line just to show it. All right. So this line is gonna go. Just here, we're going to bisect. Yeah. So, but we want is that point halfway between A and O. Now you can see I was having a little trouble because my compass kept moving. It's really hard. So, yeah. uh, hopefully, I figured out which is the correct intersection yeah. point here. But I was having trouble because of the compass. So just bear in mind, it's better to uh, so you, yeah I just do a little tick right there so we know. Okay, so that's the point we're looking for. But it really and is better to take the time and make sure you have accuracy as you go. And as you guys are doing this, obviously you'll be doing it probably on a desk or a flat surface. That's and so right. it should be easier for you guys to control your instruments. So this is point J. Okay. So since we completed that thought, our story is. Quickly. Yeah. Quickly. <laughs> When we were just learning about sacred geometry and we're very excited about it, we wanted to build structures, mm -hmm. life-size structures. So we right. built a wooden tetrahedron out of two by fours. Which is one nice. of the platonic solids, right? It's like yeah. a pyramid, like the pyramid. Yeah. And, well, with three sides. Three-sided right? pyramid. Um, the house we were living in had like our bedroom was above the basement. It was like one of those into a hill where you drive in the garages in the basement, you know, yeah, so you drive in. Everything's on a slant. In the mountains, it's like that. Yeah. So we did it in the garage underneath our bedroom. <laughs> that started night, affecting your sleep, now, huh? this was in the winter. And this is in the mountains in Western North Carolina. It, there was snow on the ground. That night, it, we were burning up in bed. We were mm -hmm. so hot. And then mm -hmm. the next night, oh my God, what, what's going on? I, felt, I mean, internal I heat. I felt like I was cooking inside. Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden, click, by the third night, we're like, wait a minute, tetrahedron is fire. Mm -hmm. I wonder, is it possible? Yep. We went down into the basement at like two o'clock in the morning and just like, 
pulled that thing out of the garage pulled and it put it outside, pulled it apart. And that was, it was gone. Yep. But sleeping yeah. over that tetrahedron actually affected us physically. Yeah. I mean, I know people who uh, have the, um, the pyramids made out of like the titanium, titanium or the gold or whatever. Mm -hmm. Actually, Chris Kaler, who we've had on the show numerous times, he keeps his razor that he shapes his yeah, head yeah. with inside of the pyramid That's so he doesn't right. have to get a new razor. It stays sharp. Right. Because right. Of the right. Mm -hmm. So just saying, you're messing with the elements sometimes. Mm -hmm. so, yeah, yeah. So, well, pyramid word. Well, anytime word if, if you take, if you, I mean, it doesn't, you don't actually need stuff. I mean, all these things to create a portal. You just have to create the geometry and then anything energetically that can line up with it will come through. And it's, in this, this case, is, fire. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So, okay. so anyway, so that's, that's, that's okay. So you made point J. So now you get open from J to C. So this is, we actually did this particular thing in a different form in the last drawing where we were making the golden mean cut. So this is how you get the golden mean again. Um, in other words, if you projected this, this would be a double, double square. Okay, yep, I see. Right? And so you're doing a diagonal of a double square. So that's how you get the, that's how you get the golden mean line. Okay. So we open the um, compass from J to C. Mm -hmm. And then you're going to drop a construction line down to, to the line, to the horizon line. And these are kind of fun because you can just do a broken line and they look kind of cool on the drawing. Yeah. Make it look like you've been doing something. Right. <laughs> but also sometimes you do a drawing and then you have to figure out how you got there again. Yeah. So there's actually kind of like shorthand notes that, uh, that you can take. So that's point K. What do you guys think about, since we're talking about living in geometric structures, what do you think about like the, you know, the geodesic domes and the Buckminster Fuller yeah. kind of stuff? Yeah, well, that's like living inside a fullerene. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, I love it. I, I want to have one. I, like, I want to at least have one like in my backyard that I can go hang out in or something. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, well, we've been a limited experience, but they've always, they've always felt good. Yeah, we well, had a friend who had uh, was living double, inside a double one, like double side one. by side, like different, mm -hmm. different, yeah, upper level. Yeah, with like a bathtub sitting out in the middle yeah, of, it was of the whole cold. thing. Yeah, in a I like the like, so uh, when I used to go to a lot more parties and I used to go to a lot of the outdoor festivals, some of the musical areas would be inside of geodesic domes, and that was always really cool too. And they make yeah. greenhouses out of them too. Mm -hmm. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. They're cool. All right. So where were we? So J to K. So now you're going to move. Do, 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 do. Um, all right. Label that point K. All right. So now, so now we have the golden mean ratio. So if A to O is one, A to K is five, the golden mean. Okay. So we're just going to make it explicit. A to O is one. Okay. A to K, I'll do it up here. Oh, just for brackets. <laughs> hey, Dave, your brackets are as good as your radius. <laughs> right. It's so, phi, which is a circle with a straight line through it. You can give it a little. Yeah. All capital right, so that's down. phi, which, which is 1.618, the golden mean ratio. Okay. I. All right, so that's the. The ratio one behind the creation of six one eight. Okay. So, so now that we've established phi, and the comp now the compass is, is should still be open from A to K. We'll see. Oh no, or you have to open it. Yes, open it from A to K. Let's check. No, it's 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 on A to C. So we gotta open to K. Oh, this is where we yeah. This is. The point where yeah. we ran out of room right with the other compass right so you got to a to k now you're going to make cuts um okay. all right we'll open the case swing um arcs above and below the original circle from a b c and d here yeah like this yep a i'll do a and d and hope that this doesn't move Mm -hmm. 
So at least already we have our horizon and vertical lines okay. extended out so we kind of know where they're going. We're here, mm -hmm. see? Yeah, so it's not dependent on my uh, looking at it by I. And then down to D, mm -hmm. get a good firm footing. And There's don't. actually a good reason why she's doing the drawing and not me because I'm much more mercurial and I'd be like flying all over the place in the radius. <laughs> To be like an accordion pretty much by the time I'm done with and it. And I'm Jupiterian and slow. So we didn't need we, we didn't need you to tell us that, Steve, for a <laughs> <laughs> oh, really? But thank you for your transparency. Uh, well, We're very I mean, happy to be transparent. <laughs> <laughs> Steve's a little more like me and likes to wander off. He's yeah, he's like double gemini. Yeah. So I uh, yeah. Okay. So, uh, where were now we, we so? gonna do the big circle? Um, for you to repeat points, we do the L of OC. So oh, open the, so these. now you want the. We need to label these? No, 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 no we don't. No. You're going to open the, the compass. Do I need to, I'm going to change oh, color. Right. Gonna no, you do have to, right? You do have to, right, right. So L is above C. I apologize. Mm -hmm. It's in L my notes. M. L is above C. M is below D. Oh, yep. down here? Yeah. And then ends on the left, and O, is left, and then we'll right. go to we'll go straight to P though, right? Because we're skipping oh, O. Right. right. Okay. Emily's been paying Emily has, has anticipated us. Oh, you I know. She must have loved you, Emily. She's drawing. She's <laughs> well, it, I was always very confusing to people because of how hyper I am. They assume I have trouble paying attention. Uh huh. But right. I have no trouble paying attention. I just have trouble sitting still. I think yeah. you take it all in. Yeah. I think you're there. <laughs> I'm going to make this circle red. So, so now, just no, we're not making a, a circle yet. Oh, we're not doing it. No, we, we, <laughs> yeah, no, so now you're going to get the other small compass. You're going to make the moon circles. Okay. So this starts, so this is where you start getting cool. Okay. So, so you can start, so you open the radius from L to C. So for this, because the compass with the extension doesn't work, we actually had to go out and buy another small, uh, a smaller compass right. to do for this. How much we love everyone here. <laughs> that we <we're> actually <laughs> to right. What a hardship. So yeah. now we're going to draw circles from L. Okay. So we open the compass from L to C, and I did it C to L because it was easier. Um, then I'm going to just make sure my compass point is firmly embedded in L, and now I can hold it up at the top and scribe my circle. Get a good firm grip. Scribe that circle. A little tricky on the board. All right. And so you're going to do that at the other four points. This is not absolutely necessary, but it, it adds an elegance to the drawing. Mm -hmm. Okay. And that's the, uh, the, the beauty part of the. Is that, and we're all, when you do this, it also starts to create the basic framework for the more complicated uh, shape, which would be the Metatron's cube, correct? So yes, that the would be there, and also the city of Jerusalem, which would involve having two more, which is a 12 circle thing. Not a shocker that that lines up with the Metatron's cube. <laughs> right? <laughs> right, and that, and that may be our next drawing. Okay, Metatron's uh, cube has always been the, like, the, sh the shape that both I'm most attracted to and most weary, you know, most uh, have the most anxiety about for some reason. Trigger. Yeah, I, I think a lot of my programming was based around it. Huh. Yeah. Well, but, I, but I, you know, but I also really like it. <laughs> that's interesting. That's interesting. Do I know the Metatron's cube? I don't, that's not sounding familiar to me. Yeah, if you see it, you'll, you'll know. Okay. No. Um, okay, so now. What we what these circles are so it's based again on the golden mean being being projected up above this above the Earth circle. Mm -hmm. These are exact moon circles. Okay. This is the exact relationship between the Earth and the Moon. So let's write that in. So if this is the Earth. Yeah, or as they say in the Scotland, the Earth. The Earth. The Earth. They make it like trisyllabic. 
Um, so this is the moon. So the moon. So in other words, so it's, it's the Earth and the moon have an eleven to three ratio. Should I okay. Yeah. Yeah. So so if the the Earth the the Earth is eleven, then the moon, Celine. I'm going to try to write it big. The Earth. I have a question I want to ask, but I'm struggling with how to ask it because it makes sense in my head, but sometimes it's harder to get it out. You guys, have, you guys pay any attention to Crow, to the Crow's work? Crow yeah, triple seven? Here and there. And not a, you know. Okay, so he's the one who initially like got gained prominence in the alternative media by filming what he called the lunar wave, right? Right, right. So it's basically... Right, I've seen that. Okay. So he, I don't know where he's at with things now, but you know, there was a time when he was considering obviously that the moon is not a natural object. Is it a projection? Oh, right. All of this kind of stuff, right? And he's also dabbled into the question of whether the earth is flat or not. I don't think he's committed to either any position. He, I guess the thing that I haven't listened to him in a while or spoken with him in a while, but he was very committed and I agree that we don't know where we are or what this is that we are in, right? Like I, I agree with him on that point. Mm -hmm. But it's interesting because we're looking at squaring the circle. And so I'm just, I'm struggling to put this together. But these principles and the way it could be used, it seems like whether we're living on a sphere with an actual moon or whether we're on a flat earth with a projected moon, because this circle has been squared, that could be the flattening of the earth and a projection above these principles and the way that they can be used to both shape, manipulate, and explain are valid either way. Yes. 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 And, way, okay. and what we're going to be talk okay. so we're talking about is going to, yeah. No matter how it's constructed, these are the numbers behind it. Okay. Gotcha. Yeah. Right? Okay. So, so yeah. it is a construction. It's a construction of some kind. Whether it's whether it's the demiurge, you know, from right. Plato. So whether and, whether it's been constructed to control us, or whether the fact that some people understand it and others don't, and by that way it's been used to control or manipulate us, right. it doesn't really matter. The geometry explains it sort of either way. What, or whether it's been manipulated or overtaken. Over, yeah, okay. You know whether, like I said, whether it's a projection yeah. over whatever's really there, which you know. But yes, that's well knows. articulated, Emily. Yeah. That, okay. So this is why we love sacred geometry because it's, it's behind all the religions, it's behind all the mm -hmm. verbiage that, that people argue about and kill each other over. Right. You know, mm -hmm. Nobody kills themselves over pretty drawings, as far as I know. <laughs> <laughs> all right, 11, <laughs> the earth is 11. You know? The earth is 11, we didn't moon finish. The moon is three. The moon is three. And so this is the relationship. Side by side? Whatever, yeah. It doesn't fine. matter? That's fine. Okay. So I, I don't know if it got quite to killing, but I'll relay, a, I'll relay a story here. So when I was in like the early days of like my, the heavy sort of deprogramming, I was having all of these very active dreams in which I was having these sort of um, like uh, battles uh, with, that involved like a, like a capoeira. So capoeira is like a, Dan a martial art disguised as dancing. It's a Brazilian martial art, right? Mm. So it was like these capoeira battles, but it wasn't just about the physical maneuver. It was also an exchange of ideas. And a lot of these like things that we were throwing back and forth were various geometries. So this was a battle based on ideas oh, that were formed really? of geometry. So I, I, I don't know if any of these battles ever, you know, in this case, obviously I survived whatever, whatever battle it was, but I might have to argue with you about whether or not people kill each other over pretty shame. Oh, <laughs> oh. or not okay. an argument, in but my, interject a in new my, perspective. Yes, I don't mean an argument, but yes. I, yeah, I, you know, I actually I, think that that is what the final battle may be about right like that like all they keep the silly people arguing over this overlay and the things that have been projected off of it the but that th the thing that is being hidden and most protected really is the design of this space whether it be literal or figure that's why right. so this is so important this is yeah. this is like the right. blueprint that everything hangs on that everything's flushed out on I mean, think about it. Some of like uh, how important a book for what, however, whatever you think of it, whether you love it or hate it, a book that has been so important in shaping so many people's political philosophies, like Atlas Shrugged or Fountainhead by Ayn Rand, is all based around architecture, which is about blueprints. Yeah, right. it could be describing the larger battle of what people really understand where they're at as. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and you know, and to just to add on to what you yep. said. And though, you know, I, I stand, you know, my limited perspective on, on, on death via drawings, but, uh, <laughs> with, 
the, you know, four years after they put our, our smart meter in, and until actually I put Shungite stickers on it for years, which was under our bed, uh, my dreams were, were sort of like this combination of geometry mm -hmm. and, and computer programming. Mm -hmm. I've had, yep. Just morphing and doing all these things. And it wasn't until I put the Shungite on that I, I started having narrative dreams again. Yep. Yeah, I, I experienced the same thing. Uh, a lot of those dreams, right? It was during the time that was happening for me. I did not have a smart meter, but I would, I would throw in that the others, it, it isn't purely about the smart meter, that that's actually a lot to do with the lily waves, right? The lily waves that are running through our walls because of electricity and mm -hmm. the sugar that is in your body, which is programmable matter. Mm -hmm. And so, because that stuff stopped for me also with the change of the diet and the beginning of wearing Shungite. So the Shungite, just oh. having the Shungite on the smart, the smart meter may have something to do with it, but having Shungite all around you is also helping to protect, protect you from uh, yeah. the effects of the lily waves. At the very least, the, 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 it's, and it wasn't, it's not technically a smart meter, but it's a, but it, it's, it's a digital, a, digital, it's digital meter. meter. It's, it's, it's not an app. Yeah. You know. yeah. And yeah, so and whatever it is, it's an amplification device of some kind. Absolutely. You know, you know. so we have our moon circles because theoretically we have limited time. Yeah. Um, yes, but I'm 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 trying to dilate right now. Yeah. So <laughs> yeah, so we have our so we have our moon circle. So this is so this is an exact replica of the relationship between the Earth and the Moon. Um, and as I think we mentioned in the last show, there's. Um, 108 diameters between the moon, not 100. Um, I think so. 108,000. I don't know. You have to look at your notes, sir. 108. All right, we'll get back to that later. 108,000, right? Don't. 108 diameters. No, no, exactly. 108 diameters between the Earth. Well, 108 is your favorite number, right, Steve? Right, yes. right. Yeah. So this is a okay. huge sacred number. So exactly 108 disks of the moon will fit between the moon and the earth and exactly 108 disks diameters of the sun will fit between the sun and the earth. Oh, that's this, interesting. Course, taking, the, the orbits, of course, are elliptical, so this is taking an average orbit, right? Okay. So in other words, it would have to be the same because from our perspective, whatever the construct is, the perspective is that the earth and uh, the moon and the sun are the exact same size from our perspective. Right. Which, which given the theoretical randomness of that would be what that would be one possible explanation for why that is. I've, well, I've, a, that's the well, that's the, the numerical explanation. Yeah. And the numerical ex explanation comes up with a sacred number 108. Yeah, that's a, that, that, and that's probably for a while I was playing with the perceptual idea that the moon and the sun were actually the same thing with different things being projected off it, that it was the same uh. structure. Oh. Right, like because you know our sun, the sun is very different than it used to be, right? And when I would sometimes look for some reason, when I would look at the sun and it has like this copper shimmeriness on it now, like this, you know, it looks sort of like a new penny sometimes, right? And then like an opalescence coming off of it. For some reason, when I would see it look like that, like some, I would like hear almost like you know a, a voice in my head, not a real one, not a V2K voice or a real voice, but just like something kept saying it's because it's the moon, right? So I was wondering, I, you know, I, who know who the fuck knows where we actually are at this point? But mm -hmm. I mean, if we're in some sort of simulation or some sort of you know copy of what we were originally in, it would make sense to make things easier that they would use the act, same structure and project different things off of it to make it believe it was different stuff, right? Yeah, it's gotta be, yeah, and, and because it has an effect, for example, full moons, I can't sleep. Right. You know, and so it has an effect. So it can't be just a protection. Yeah. It's got to be something else more. Yeah, it was, just a, it was just a thought that occurred to me at one time. So I played with that idea for a bit. But I think it was mostly a dog that didn't hunt. Good because you really work from your, your own personal observations. And that's yeah. always the best place to start. Yep. Good. Okay. So now we are going to perform the sacred act of, of, of circling the square. Circling the square. And we're bringing heaven and earth together. So Chris is going to open her compass from O to L. Always a firm footing. Make sure you're firmly implanted. Take a deep pole at O. Get your grounding devices out, everybody. Oh, this is, yeah. This is <laughs> so, so here we are. This is an extremely sacred act because it's not just a drawing. This is an actual interior resonance. 
Yeah, well, it's open. It's it's opening a portal, right? It's opening up yeah. that geometry. And it's and it's it's holding the the the, the, the celestial, the angelic the heavenly part of ourselves and the grounded square three-dimensional part of ourselves together. Do you have any idea how satisfying it is that this pen is going right through <laughs> each X right at the point of crossing? Oh, go. look. Yay! Now, <laughs> now we have circled the square. All right. right. It, that, it, the vibration coming off of the drawing feels significantly different now with that there. Doesn't, that it, is, it, doesn't it? Yeah, it, I can feel it yeah. here. Yeah. Glad you can pick up on Good, that. Emily. Yeah. And then, yeah. and then when we, you know, we're not going to do it today, but when you put your square around this moon and drop down the, for the three, four, five triangle, oh. that gives you a whole mm -hmm. other experience. Mm -hmm. You guys, just, just uh, there's a, and I don't know if you're going to talk about it in this segment or in the next, but you guys did send me a video about the Vitruvian man. And when it launched off into the 3D drawings yes. of the pyramid, yes. like my inner, my insides got really excited. You know, I can't okay. explain it. Like I start to okay. get all, you know, <laughs> when yes. I see very that. Exciting. And that's very exciting. exciting. Yeah. The work of Alan Green and he yeah. is the so we can maybe we can start the second half with that with that drawing if we can. Um, and I'll include the video in the description for everybody. But great, yeah, great. So from here though, so now so now the next cool thing we're going to do is we're going to draw a line from A to L. A to L. Okay, that goes. And that's so. This is so. What we're going to do is, in point of fact, <coughs> describe the Giza pyramid in this drawing. And I'm going to use my green pen for this. Because the pyramid is, is, was once covered with white marble. So I'll use my yellow marker. No, no, use green. No, use no, green. it'll show up. Let's see. Let's see. You tell me if it shows the sands, up. Okay. Time in the sands of Egypt. So. Again, so you're going from A to L. L, L, L not C, A to L. Give myself room for my marker thickness. Let me know, Emily, if this shows up. All right. Oh, I think so. Does that show up? Uh, it's faint. It's faint. Mm -hmm. Let me see. Uh, like, talk so you're, I, I, I'm, like, you guys are little on my screen right now. As soon as you start talking, you'll be big on my screen. Okay. So. Oh, all right. Let's all talk. Right. Yak, yak, yak. So, yeah, it's a little faint. I can see it like at the edges of the drawing, but in the middle, it's kind of hard to see. All right. So I'll just, you can, I can play with it. Put a notch on it or something. I can play with it. Shadow it or something. Let me see. And then I'm going to get from A to B. So. Right. So what we've made. Oh, I can see it now. Can you see it all right? Yeah, I can see oh. it pretty well now. I mean, you people are watching you do it. So, you know, like, yeah. Look, yeah, look for it. You guys look for it. I think you can see what she's doing. She's trying to keep separate colors so that it's. Uh, yeah, it makes the drawing much more interesting. Mm -hmm. It's visible now, especially next to the other colors. Yeah. And, um, also, what I like to do is have some of these nice metallic markers. Steve brought these for me because he's a nice guy. But this one is gold. I keep her busy. Mm. So I can go over it with the gold. You know, I want to. All right. Oh, yeah. really yeah. Look at you. Who needs a ruler? Who needs a yeah. ruler? Yeah. I've always uh, had major admiration for people that can draw perfect shapes to, without any assistance. You know. Well, uh, <laughs> Isn't um, it supposedly Da Vinci, right, who's able to draw like yeah perfect circles? I've known people. And, well, there went off yeah. a little bit, but that's fun. Okay, so now, but this is the exact. Much easier to see. Yeah. So yeah. this is the exact cross section of the Pyramid of Giza. Okay. Again, so that relates to the moon, the earth, here's the, this is the earth, this is the earth diameter, mm -hmm. plus the moon diameter, so, so the Pyramid of Giza gives you that exact ratio. Yep. Now I'm going to write Giza. And All right. this angle is a very famous angle, angle A and angle B, it's 51 degrees, 51 minutes. Okay. So that's the angle of, of the Great Pyramid. Okay. So it, 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 it considers both space and time. Right. Well, yeah. Th yeah. Because th that angles are divided into minutes and seconds. Yeah. We well, said 51 degrees, 51 minutes. And so yeah, I like so that. Interesting yeah, yeah. Rep repetition into that. Yep. So now, um, 
so we have that and so 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 the uh, so now so that this is the drawing basically it so this is got the giza pyramid so again we can find phi in the pyramid because if ao again equals one mm -hmm. right um where to go al is phi okay okay wow that's cool so right. so the What's side the of the pyramid to um half the base so anytime there's the brackets, that is phi. Right, the, the, the circle with the line through it is phi. Okay. And Chris writes out this phi also. Me, is that what you're referring to? You yeah. Referring to? Yeah, yeah, that's 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 just a way of showing yes. distance in a in a gotcha. draw. Okay. Yeah, that's just saying, oh look here, we're going from A to L. Okay. And A to O. So that's the drawing. And so now we just have some some numbers to play with. How are we doing time wise? Great. We have about we have about 10 minutes in the first segment left, maybe okay. 10 or 12 minutes. We, so we, can, if, we, can, we can blow through this then. So, okay. so, so see, if we so, go a few minutes over, it's okay. So here we have it. So here we got this. So this is, so they've got the perfect um, earth, moon, and then how the Giza pyramid fits within it, right? So okay. it fits perfectly within that. Um, now that you so know now, that. So now we're going to see how those numbers work out uh, cosmically, okay? okay. So, so Chris can start writing this well, down. I just had a thought. Uh oh. Well, since we're going to talk about Alan Green's discoveries with the Vitruvian Man drawing, and he's working with the um, the whole the pyramid up and the pyramid down, can I draw these other lines in? You can, but that's. Well, I just thought. But he has it in his drawing, and if we show. I know, it, but then we'll have it in ours. Okay. Go ahead. I would go like ahead. to do that. <laughs> I'm not going to stop you. I, got you <laughs> well, I like that, but you know, because look. All right. right. So, so one of the things to understand about, about pyramids is that it's an actually implied octahedron, which is, which is a double pyramid, right? Mm -hmm. Out from each other. This isn't a perfect, the pyramid of Giza wouldn't be a perfect octahedron, but it's pretty darn close. And um, because you're, yeah. octahedron is the element air, is it not? I don't know. Um, but so anyway, so whenever you have a pyramid, it implies the pyramid underneath. Yeah. So the, you'll see this in Alan's drawing when we get to the next to the Patreon event. Right. Thing. Right. But this is like an energetic. Okay. Recapitulation kind of, of what's a, above. It's an abo as above, so below. Okay. That's the uh, that's the alchemical. Since we're alchemical insiders, apparently. <laughs> yes. <Yeah. laughs> You may be familiar with that particular phrase. Randy came up with that one, and I think it was appropriate. Oh, he did. Oh, bless uh, yeah. his heart. That's sweet. Well, we have a couple of things here that might be of interest to Randy and his, uh, you know, and his work with the Book of Revelations. Okay. Um, so anyway, so if the so the Earth radius, I guess you can write these up here if you want. Okay. So the Earth radius is three thousand nine hundred and sixty miles. Earth. Well, that's say. interesting. Three thousand nine hundred and sixty miles. It's, it reverses the number slightly, but it's three six nine. So that's kind of three nine. You know right, what I mean? It's all, yeah. Exactly. Exactly. The first three multiples of three. All right. Yeah. Thirty nine sixty. Three, nine, six, o. And then the diameter, and then the moon radius is is one thousand eighty. Is that one oh eight again? Yeah, your favorite. Right. One oh eight oh. Right. And so together, so if you looked at it um, proportionally, right? So if this is the thirty nine sixty, the radius of the Earth, then the radius of the Moon is ten eighty, and then the two of them together is five thousand forty. Oh four oh. Five oh four oh. And. Um, not to get too far into it, but if you get into Plato and his ideal cities, the number 5040, it comes up over and over again. There's 5,040 5, citizens, 5,040 divisions of the land. Um, oh, interesting. You know, and on and on it and on. It is interesting. Did you, guys ever use, did you guys ever listen to, uh, I haven't listened to him in years, but uh, uh, Andrew Bartzis used to talk about the fact that we live in sacred geometry cities. Okay. Right, and so that just popped to mind, and yeah, he had some yeah. interesting ideas behind it. Uh, but that popped to mind when you said that the perfect city, yeah, yeah. especially recently generated cities like what you know, 
more like recently Washington, Canberra, um, Australia, capital of Australia, is uh, it was designed by uh, um, an anthroposophist, as a matter of fact. Mm. They, uh, uh, that, there's a book, actually, I have it, and I haven't had a chance to read it because I'm just now going to start to have a chance to read books again. Um, but it's called The Vitruvian Code by Robert Humrich, and it talks, it's yep. really about the geometry of Washington, D.C. Okay. Right. Yeah. yeah. There's a series, and I can't it's remember really the guy's name. Um, there's a series of really good videos this guy put out, like 20 videos on all of that and connecting the obelisks, you know, yeah. really interesting stuff. All right, but not get too far afield. All right, so that's 50. And of course, if you add the 50-40 plus the 50-40, you get the 1080 again. Right. Yep. So, that, so that harmonic keeps showing you up. You get the 1080, but you also, nine times six is 54. So there's our nine and our six again. I don't right. know what we, well, yeah, well, here's we the other cool 18, thing. 36, and, 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 uh, and nine, uh, sorry. Uh, okay, I lost my count. Never mind. Well, this is the cool thing. So if you, add, if you do one times two times three, do it up there. Up here? Yeah, it's kind of out of the way more. One times two times two times three times three times four times five, times six, times seven, you get 50, 40. Oh, interesting. And then if you multiply seven times eight, times nine, times 10, you get 50, 40 again. Huh, interesting. The seven being, and the seven being a very important number, and that's the sort of the virgin number, the sacred yep. number, that's the fulcrum up, upon which that sits. Lucky okay. number seven. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, it's a sacred to uh, Athena and various goddess manifestations. So, so take, if you take these numbers, right, the 5040 and the, um, the 1080 being the, the radius, well, so, then there's also seven chakras in the body, right? And I, I, right. I'm sure we're going to get into the discussion of the, the idea of other chakras existing outside right. of the body. But that's right. interesting that we're also the seven with seven chakras in the body. So, yeah. yeah, it's a particular okay. construct. So, 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 um, so, then, so then that, so then if, to the perimeter, like we said, the perimeter of the circle and the square are the same, right? So the perimeter of, is going to be. Of what? Are no, the, the perimeter. No, the perimeter. I'm sorry. The perimeter of the, the, the this Earth circle and the and the perimeter of the square. This Earth circle. Yeah, the perimeter. This is with the perimeter the of this circle. construct. Um, actually, that's not, not coming out. It's the perimeter of the. Yeah, the perimeter of the square that we've just done, is going to be, thirty one, six eighty miles. Of, of what? Of we'll the just square? say this, this, this yeah. Is 31, 680. So if you work out the perimeter of the city of New Jerusalem, it comes out to 31, 680 feet. So the city of New Jerusalem in the Book of Revelations comes out to that exact number. All right. New Jerusalem. Next, with that particular number, I can't think of hearing Jerusalem without the Sinead, hearing the Sinead O'Connor song. Jerusalem. Jerusalem. <laughs> All right. So, so this thirty-one sixty-eight is very interesting for in Gematria. All right. The the, the 3168 is, is the Lord Jesus Christ. Okay. In, uh, in Greek gematria. Okay. Right? Um, G, uh, the Jesus right. is. How do I write this? If you can do the Lord is 800. So Jesus is famously 888. Okay. In Greek gematria. And uh, the Christos, which Christos means anointed one. Okay. Is um, Sorry. 1480. Plus Christ. Lord Jesus 888. Oh, Jesus. All right. Jesus. 
we both grew up in Catholic school where, where it's interesting, you know, the, the muscle memory of, of like, you used to have to nod your head every time you said Jesus. <laughs> Catholic school, I don't, you know, that was just like standard operating procedure. Christ. One, four, eight, oh. Right, and the total of that is 3168. Okay. So in other words, within this perimeter of the squared circle, the perimeter of the of the city of the New Jerusalem is the gematria of Lord of Lord Jesus Christ. Uh -huh. Also, also uh, the word cosmic is the same as eight hundred, so it's also the cosmic Jesus Christ, which kind of okay. makes sense, you know. So that that equals the same thing, and then also. Um, the other thing, and this, and then um, the number five hundred four. Back to that harmonic. Also, uh, both the words "the holy" and "the good" equal five hundred four in Greek in Greek gematria. So again, just showing how these numbers show up in, uh, in, in within the Greek gematria. And then the the only. I guess wait. Let Chris finishes that. I guess it's the good. Yeah. And then in, in the only piece of original research of mine in this is that if you take the gematria of truth, beauty, and the good, <laughs> that also equals 888, which is, interesting. Which, was, which, is, which is the Christ. Mm -hmm. So which is really interesting how all these numbers sort yep. of oscillate together. Yeah, you know? very interesting. And so the, last, so the last piece of it, and a lot of this comes from uh, this guy, John Michel, who's a really interesting sacred geometer, died about five years ago, something mm -hmm. like that. Okay. Uh, English guy. He's very, uh, very really highly respected. Yeah, yeah. Um, and, and actually, and his order, on top of a bunch of books of sacred geometry, he's got a great guidebook for England called uh, Sacred England, I think. Yeah. If you're going to England, that's a great one to have. All right. Okay. So, the last thing I want to mention here, so we talked about the, so this is all based on the radius. If you have the diameter of the Earth's circle then, which is, right, so we have the radius here is 3960, but if you, so if you, so the, that's the radius, so the diameter is, is double that, so that's going to be 7920, right? So the diameter of the Earth, Again, that's the idealized diameter of the Earth as it exists is 7920. We know it's oblong and all that sort of stuff. Okay. But, but, but all these, but the thing too, all these numbers were known to the ancients. Okay. You know? Give me that number again. 7920. And these are all miles. Well, that one's 7920 miles, right? Now, if you go to the diameter of Stonehenge, now this this also fits with Stonehenge. <laughs> the diameter of Stonehenge is seventy nine point two feet. Interesting. Yeah, and, 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 and which is so interesting because you look at Stonehenge and you like it doesn't look anything like the Earth, right? And so it's interesting right. that it would have the same the geometry on a certain level. My my nephew built a little Stonehenge out in the backyard uh -huh. here. I don't know. <laughs> I mean, it was, but he just put a few rocks together and whatever, right? And I was like, oh, look, he built, it looked exactly like a little oh, stone really? head. It got, it not toppled over when we had the earthquakes here a few weeks, right. <laughs> a little bit back, but. <laughs> right, and, so, and, and Stonehenge is, you know, whatever, 2,000, 3,000 years before, well, before ancient Greece anyway. And then the diameter of the city of New Jerusalem in the Apocalypse of John is 7,920 feet. So again, these are all harmonics of each other. Yep. Um, you know, and, uh, and, and so there's, this is just, you know, part of what's going on behind, behind everything. Yeah. The construct. Wow. So, Alrighty. So, so that's, a, that's a fair amount of stuff, I think. That's a fair amount of stuff. We have squared the circle and then circled the square. So <laughs> we've created something and then the inverse as well, right? <laughs> That's it. That's it. All right. So um, let's, where can, you know, before we're going to wrap up this first segment 
And we're gonna move over into the patrons hour. In the patrons hour, we're gonna talk about sacred geometry in relation to the chakra system. And so please join us over there for that, uh, Off Planet Media, sorry, patreon.com forward slash Off Planet Media. And before we go, a couple things. Stephen, Chris, where can people find you if they want to uh, okay. look into your work or interact? Right, so we have our, we have most of ours, well, we have the, the, the logosophiabooks.com, which, um, which is our publishing company. And I just recently put a, put a page on there where you can link to all the shows we've done with you and the shows we've done with Robert Phoenix and there's one with Freeman and all that. So we, cool. we've, uh, you know, we've popped up here and there. Yeah. But please, you know, if you want to support us, please buy our books. They're wonderful. We just, uh, we just came out with a new one on, uh, uh, just came out August 1st, which was Utopian on, on Trace. Utopian Trace which is about the, uh, the, the sort of the background behind Olmsted's designing of Central Park. It's got great old pictures in it, beautiful book. Um, and that's taken from essays by Peter Lamborn Wilson when he was on WBAI radio in New York. He would have a, uh, like a show. He's oh, kind cool. of a Morris, anarchist. Orthodox radio crusade. He's also, yeah, he's so also. We, had, we had the taped his, his old shows. Oh, cool. At this particular one. And, you know, we were able to send it to him and because he had lost it. Yeah. And then we transcribed it and put it into book form. Yeah. And it came out beautiful. Yeah, we cool. did. The, you know, it was kind of a cool thing. We did his his talk is in black and then his commentary as he's doing the talk on the radio is in another color. Anyway, we try to, you know, jazz it up, but we're really pleased with it. Um, so that's so that's mostly, you know, like I said, if you want to support us, buy our books. That and would I would be my say favorite thing. Steve's book, Catabatic Wind, has a whole chapter just on the number 108. Yes, it's Steve's right. favorite number. Yes, Thank and Steve, and they're very active both in the YouTube comment section and on our Patreon comment section after the shows come out. So if you guys want to interact with them, you can interact with them there. Mm -hmm. And then the other thing is that both Chris and Steve, as well as myself, will be at Robert's Harvest Moon right. Fest. Yeah. 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 Huh? Yeah, no. Yeah. The Harvest Moon Conference in Kerrville, Texas in mid-October. Um, I'm going to be making it, well, by the time this goes out, it'll already be up, but I'm going to be making a, some, a link and a post and whatnot for that. Chris, and, uh, Chris will be presenting on dowsing, and uh, Steve will be interviewing Stephen Kent. And are you doing a separate talk as well? Uh, probably not. Maybe a panel. I don't know. Okay, I don't, it, I don't, well, yeah, we're all going to be on the panel. And I will be talking about um, sugar as programmable matter and esoteric aspects of nutrition. And we're, there will be panel discussions and we'll all be available for general chitter chatter all weekend. I'll we also be doing talk. some nutritional consultations and uh, have uh, some appointments available for nutritional consulta consultations or life coaching if you guys are interested in that. So go to robertphoenix.com to check out the information on the Harvest Moon Festival and I will also post a link to that yeah. and I look forward to getting to meet you guys there so yeah. um, okay so that wraps up the first hour yeah, please join us thanks. yeah thank you please join us in the patron section section for the sacred geometry of the chakra system yeah, all right guys, we'll see you in just a minute bye Great. thanks bye. Bye. You are listening to Off Planet Radio at offplanetradio.com. You are listening to Off Planet Radio at offplanetradio.com.